everybody. Thank you so much for your support of the Cosmic Chats, for your attention and your energy, and just being a part of each episode. It makes all the difference. So if you haven't subscribed before, please consider doing so. The more subscribers that we can get, the wider the net that we can cast, and the more and more people that we can bring in to share their insights, consciousness, and wisdom and reveal that in the universe for all of us. So thank you so much and have a great day. Hi everybody, welcome to today's Cosmic Chat. I am so excited that Michael Stasco is going to be joining me. We are here to talk about forgiveness today and to awaken forgiveness and to awaken freedom and self-love. And Michael is gonna share with us how to do that. So I'm going to add Michael right now. If anyone has my other chat with Michael or has heard of him, Michael Stasco was working and serving with and learning from Ama Sri Karunamai for at least 10 years in and out of India. He, in his own right, carries such a beautiful energy of love and um, spirituality and seeing things in a deeper way. So Michael, I was just sharing a little bit about you. Um, I spoke about how you were with Ama for pretty much 10 years serving and sharing and traveling around the world, sharing this spiritual energy, this heart energy, and now you really carry it into the work that you do as a spiritual growth coach. And I know you also teach meditation classes and workshops. Your signature workshop is called Bloom, correct? That's correct. So, by the way, you have one coming up, right? I do, I do. I'd be happy to tell you maybe more about that at the end of the talk, if you're curious. But yes, up in the uh, end of April. In the end of April. And so is there anything that you wanted to add to introduce yourself to um, the commu the Cosmic Chats community? Besides what I've shared so far, I shared a little bit about you before you came on. But Yes, I think you've got everything. Uh, honored to be here with you again on Cosmic Chats and um, looking forward to sharing. So I think you've pretty much summed up most of the things about me that I would say. So happy to... Um, Again, happy to be here and talk about forgiveness. Amazing. And for anyone who hasn't joined before, my name is Debbie Sugarbaker, and I am the host of the Cosmic Chats, which is an Instagram live series. And it is also a podcast that you can find on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, on Apple Podcasts, on all the major platforms. So I get to interview individuals from all different walks of life who are elevating consciousness in one way or, level, or another, be it around medicine and healing, be it around spirituality like Michael. Um, there's just, I've had some incredible, incredible people on my podcast who have a lot to share, a lot of energy and wisdom to bring. So today we are talking about forgiveness and Michael, I wanted to ask you what in your mind, forgiveness is one of the most powerful, probably, things that capacities that we have as a human being, right? It's something that I don't know if animal, I don't think animals have the ability to forgive, to go above their nature in that way. So it's really something that's uniquely human and definitely not the easiest thing. Um, what can you tell us about forgiveness? What is it or what is it not? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, I'm going to recall the title of this talk, I believe, is Forgiveness, uh, Keys to Freedom and Self-Love. So I'll be sure to try to tie that in. Uh, forgiveness is essential for our spiritual growth and what we experience as humans. I think you also just uh, had mentioned that perhaps it's a unique capacity that humans have. And what we also have as humans is a tendency to carry the past, usually in an effort to preserve an identity. So uh, before we can talk about what it is, I think it's worth noting a few of the things that we experience and what we're all really looking for. 
uh, in my opinion, we're all really looking for connection, a deeper connection with ourself, uh, a deeper connection to whatever we want to call that, something greater than ourselves that dwells within us. And that connection uh, we experience, we attain by integration and in some sense by rejection of the false parts of ourself. So we have a tendency to weave a story. This is kind of the essence of a lot of different spiritual teachings. Uh, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind, I'm much more than I think I am. However, our tendency tends to be to form narratives, self-image, a story, and that story uh, is based on two things. One is the past, and the second one, uh, this is one way of looking at it at least, has to do with uh, where we place value and where we assign things like good and bad. So these two, one is a very polarizing view of the world, and as a result ourselves, this is the good and bad, and the second one is we're going to carry around some story about ourselves that's based on the past. Uh, these two things ultimately imprison us. So forgiveness then becomes the key to freedom because we're going to both release the past as well as these notions of good and bad. Uh, this has to do with shame. We often try to get rid of shame uh, through judgment. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and also carrying around narratives, taking things personally. So when we take things personal, something funny happens. And we begin to separate and to also uh, confine ourselves in some sense to something that's not who we truly are. So we attain self-love and freedom through release of those two things, those polarities of good and bad that can be very isolating and polarizing, and also by letting go of things that we at one time chose to take personal. So the bit it's interesting you said that because um, I was just recently reading a book called The Pathway to Surrender, which was actually recommended to me by someone. It's by, um, I believe it's Daniel Hawkins, Dr. David Hawkins. David and Hawkins. Letting yeah, go. Letting go. So he talks a lot about how, um, like you, were, you said, like from the mind's perspective, we like to see this is good and this is bad and this, was, this happened to me and this was a positive and this was a negative. But from an energetic perspective, it's all about energies, right? And energies that are kind of arising within me and maybe that is a different way to look at it more energetically rather than, you know, from the perspective of the mind and just putting mm -hmm. that out there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Like, and and this anger is awakened in me, so let me release this. Regardless of the situation, you know, when you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. So I'm being squeezed. I have some anger and resentment that's coming up. So how can I release these energies from me without attaching too much to the story? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the book Debbie's referring to is Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins. Funny, I have it on my nightstand i'm actually going through it right now um, oh, wow. i had the pleasure of meeting him about 10 years ago and i've read several of his books but uh so saying very similar things it seems that as human beings perhaps the one thing we can all benefit more from is the ability to let go because at some point in our lives we realize there's something that's no longer serving us that we still have a problem releasing so the trick becomes then how right. do we go how do we release those parts of ourselves that we know are no longer serving our highest? And forgiveness is a beautiful mechanism for this. So I'm gonna answer your first question. You asked me what is forgiveness and what is it not? Uh, the trick with forgiveness is like a few words in the English language, like love and some other words. I think there's a couple different interpretations. The forgiveness I'm gonna be talking about today is not where I'm bestowing on someone uh, some sort of charity where I, I release them from their wrongdoing and someone says, oh my God, you know, I've done something that was offensive or hurtful to you, please forgive me. And then I, I, chose, I choose to pardon them. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. The, the forgiveness we're talking about is basically, um, we can think about forgiveness and reactivity in the same 
in a very similar sense. Suppose in a moment, I have an interaction with someone and they say something that could be an attack. I might be, choose to perceive it that way. So depending on who that person is and the amount of meaning I've given them in my story will usually determine how I react to what they're saying. Right. So if a little kid comes over that you've never met before, perhaps a small child, and they say something like, I don't like your shoes. I think they're very ugly. And then you completely do not take this personal. You think this is a child. Uh, maybe they're having a bad day, all those kind of things. So I'm free from forming a, forming a narrative about myself based on what's happened. This is like in real time. Right. I can do the same with an adult, but if that adult perhaps is my parent or a partner, uh, then there's usually much more of my identity involved in that. So when the same words are said to me, I might have a different reaction. Right. The trick also is we tend to carry that with us. So forgiveness then becomes choosing to go back and kind of undo taking personal the things that I have taken personal in the past as a right. way of releasing myself from the past, from a story. Because ultimately, like we said, there's some things that we recognize no longer serve us. And if we're carrying past with us, it tends to color our present perception of things, which then become our future. Right. So we have an opportunity with forgiveness to go back and choose to relive and review a situation through different understanding. I'll go a step further and say, if you haven't gone through the activity of forgiving your caregivers and your parents, this is perhaps one of the most powerful spiritual practices that any one of us can undertake. Right. Because certainly we formed our self image by taking personal the things we experienced in childhood primarily from people that were themselves quite whole and limited. Right. So what is forgiveness then? It is not this bestowing of pardoning of others. It also doesn't mean that I'm condoning someone else's actions. It's simply my choice to no longer form a narrative about myself based on something. Wow. This wow. is important uh, understanding because then I become free. It's something I do for myself. It has nothing to do with anyone uh, outside of myself. No one can give me forgiveness. Wow. So can I just give you an example? Because that's really powerful. And it's so I had a situation where I felt like I wasn't treated well at all, you know, and <clears throat> in my mind, and I'm going to be like a little bit open here. I was like, wow, I really feel like I was like thrown like a piece of trash. You know, and actually I was telling a friend like that on the beach. Um, I was friending, telling a friend about it on the beach and I used those words. And of course, it's not words that I would want to use about myself. Right. Or I want to use about any human being. But that's how I felt. That's how I felt I was treated. And that's how I felt. I guess I must have felt that somehow about myself. Maybe I picked it up somewhere in childhood or whatever. But I was on the beach and I was telling a friend about this. And right as I tell him those words about two seconds later a little dog comes out of nowhere like he comes running like in santa monica beach like a dog free just comes up to me and pees on my on me like pees on literally pees on my hip and then runs away and i said and he said like wow do not ever say that again like do you see what the universe said you said those words about yourself and then look how it responds this is what you create you know for yourself so like you said, the process of coming into a place of forgiveness around that situation um, has been a process of me letting go of that narrative and perhaps the initial wound that happened where I felt like I was just tossed aside. You know, it, it definitely was imprinted from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm not sure. I It just it really I rang true with how you said it and... Um, of course, like I said, it's like, even now I'm sharing that. It's like, I want to cry. I, w I wouldn't want any, that's not a, a way that any human being should feel, you know, but mm -hmm. so it's interesting. Yeah, I, I appreciate your sharing. And I understand we can all feel um, 
used or worthless um, from time to time. So what happens in forgiveness is we have to be authentic. It means I can't uh, bypass what's going on and think I've arrived at forgiveness. The reason I feel pain is because I gave someone, it could be very natural, but I gave them some value in my life. I gave them a place of prominence. Uh, ultimately, what really happened was I was searching for myself in them with a capital S. So the first, a lot of this, what I'm going to talk about is somewhat of a paraphrase of the content you might find in things like A Course in Miracles. But basically, when, when I project this, the first people I project the self on are, are my caregivers, the parents, mm -hmm. self with a capital S. Uh, when I enter into adulthood, I then project this on romantic partners. In fact, the romantic partner can make you feel ways that no one else can, specifically for this reason. Right. So uh, in times of a breakup or if someone, for whatever reason, I've given them some prominence and value in my life, then right. uh, I have to be authentic. Means where I have defined me including the value I've given that person, I have to face the repercussions of that. So there's going to be pain, hurt, disappointment, all those things that I have to go through. So forgiveness becomes the final step in the healing process. It can't be the first step. If we never react, that's different. Someone I don't know says something, it's not personal. How could it be about me? They don't even know me. I can, I can have that reaction. Right. Someone I've given great meaning to hurts me or says the same thing. Then because of how much of myself is identified with them, I feel pain and all those things. So I have to go through the process of feeling through my feelings to feel everything. Shame, right. anger, disappointment, frustration, all those kind of things. And once I've filled, th I've filled through them, so they're not resisted. And at the same time, they don't have a lasting takeover of my body and mind. Then I arrive at a place where I can choose to view the situation differently. I become curious about what's happened or less likely to condemn. This is the good and bad piece. So remember I told you that we gain so much freedom through forgiveness because it releases the past and it removes polarities of good and bad. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but I have to be authentic. I can't say, oh, it didn't hurt or it's okay. That's too soon. I know, no, I did give them value. It's going to have this reverberation through my system. I'm going to feel through my feelings. And then afterwards I think, okay, what really happened here? It's only that hurt people hurt people. Right. So I can choose then. It's a choice, ultimately. I can choose to attempt to understand them. And at the very least, I can choose not to condemn them. Right. The and also because in a way, they can sometimes be like, for example, in that situation, it was a few, it was like a, a, a few it wasn't just one person. It was kind of like, you know, filming from a work situation. It was like a whole thing that came to me, that energy, and it awakened in me a lot of like anger, like I said. Mm -hmm. But in a way, it kind of finally gave me, like I said, wow, how could I have allowed myself to be in such a position where I felt, where I thought so little of myself for those years and that I allowed myself to kind of be stepped on or whatever, in whatever way. So in a way, the energy and the situation, when it came back in this way, I was able to say like, boom, and like, I need to, that Debbie is gone. Now I need to learn about boundaries and taking care of myself and I deserve a lot more. So sometimes, sometimes those situations can pull you into a place where you really get to know who you're more of your big S self, right? Like your soul. Yes, your biggest self, and also your, your biggest self, and where we've given away where we were looking for that before. In right. some power. So what, what's right. interesting 
is I don't know your, your whole story, but I appreciate your sharing. But I think it's worthwhile talking about this because we're also in a time where um, what happens sometimes, it can happen to a middle child, it can happen to a minority, it can happen to a single person in a workplace. We sometimes have this like what's called like scapegoating or like cancel culture or all those kind of things where we decide that we're going to basically um, place all of the things or problems or negativity or anything about ourselves ultimately that we don't like, we'll place on someone else and then we'll banish them. Uh, this can happen. We can do, we do this as group racism is a part of this. Um, this mechanism exists in many different uh, forms, but the concept is, um, again, uh, it, it, it doesn't lead to integration or growth. Right. So if we were to experience this, to be subject to something like this, which is very possible, some of us are um, minorities in this country or the countries where we live, uh, women, or anyone, anyone can be subjected to this sort of thing. So what's, again, the key thing is uh, we have to feel through our feelings because we did value depending on how much we did. And then we can arrive at this place of choosing to undo what was once taken personal and visit it that way. So what's interesting is this is what where forgiveness also touches. So releasing the past, I think that part's kind of clear where we form narratives that we choose to let go of. The other piece I want to talk about is that right. uh, the opposite of forgiveness is, is typically, and this is going to lead to self-love. The opposite of forgiveness is something like condemnation or resentment or taking things personal. So right. when, when we have this uh, attack thoughts for another person, and we all have them, if you just sit for a moment and think, who do I have resentment or attack thoughts toward, then people will come to mind. Right. And it will be based on the past. So what's really happening is, The places that we, um, let me say it this way, the ego, the part of ourself that is a narrative or, or not connected to ourself, but the big S, nothing wrong with the ego, it's not our enemy, but our individuality, our limited ego right. is placed through good and bad, through polarity. Right. So the trick is, we begin to soften these good and bad. Why? Our desire to be good is usually based on some list of rules that come from our parents and society. Right. But if we want to feel connected, which is how I started the talk to say that I think we all just really want to feel connected to ourselves deeply. If we want to feel connected, we're going to arrive there through becoming whole, not becoming good. Good is someone's definition, and we have our own unique thing that was birthed into this world. Beautiful. The world needs our uniqueness. However, we're uh, usually combating that or balancing that against a bunch of good and bad that we learned in childhood and through society. Things that are acceptable and tolerable that we can express, and things that are not, which we will deny or repress. So the repressed parts of ourselves we feel shame about. And if you have shame, we try to get rid of shame through judgment. There's somebody else that's the source of my um, difficulty or hardship, or there's someone else that has uh, these repressed qualities that I am then going to label as bad. I, right. can, I judge, I, I ostracize, I scapegoat, and in doing so, I can then gain some relief. Right. Rarely. I've it's so interesting because a lot of times like you see someone, especially if you're like with the empath, the empath narcissistic, narcissist dynamic, which mm -hmm. a lot of people are, have been talking about in the last couple of years, which I know it can be extremely, extremely painful. And I know that there is, it can be a really serious issue for people dealing with narcissists and narcissism, whatever. But something that I realized just through my own experience, having been somebody who 
who identifies more as an empath, you know, and then I see someone who seems to be acting like without regard, I'm like, oh, you know what? It was really a hard pill to swallow, but I realized that actually that was a shadow aspect of myself that I had tucked away and kind of disassociated from. And seeing it in this person and feeling that was actually me not wanting to see that part of myself because it was unacceptable when I was a child, you know, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. behaviors that they were doing or mm -hmm. saying. So that was really, really eye opening for me because we, it's the idea of the universe as our mirror, right? So what you see in somebody else, it reflects back something either to help me to grow and to alter something within myself or to embrace a part of myself that I may be completely disassociated from because it wasn't acceptable in the household that I grew up in to behave like that as the middle child or, you know, whatever the situation might be. So that's, that's that, a really that, interesting part. We're often attracted to people that embody some of the repressed parts of ourselves because we want to find wholeness through association with our partner. Again, our romantic partner is our search for, especially in the West. I feel like if you're in the part of the modern Western culture, yeah, uh, I, I feel like we have this in our kind of, um, we got it through osmosis almost. We right. are for ourselves, basically divine connection through our romantic partner. more. Right. So um, just to go back and say, yeah, 100% I agree with what you're saying. So this search also, because if you have these repressed parts of yourself, we have a, uh, some of us, we can't even always verbalize it, but many of us are ha on a search to be good, to find innocence and to be the good that was required in order to receive acceptance and validation from our caregivers. Right. Learned what was okay, what wasn't. Right. If I was in a household where it was important to be punctual and structured and organized, I right. became punctual, structured, and organized, and the more free-flowing, creative, unstructured parts of myself are usually then not finding expression, and I might be very well be attracted to someone that embodies those qualities. Right. At the same time, I might not be attracted to them. I might also um, feel so uncomfortable about them that I will judge those people that, and even my, right. part, my partner, when they get too close, once we form a, a bond, a relationship that's usually what we argue about yeah the things that uh, i try to control my partner because those repressed parts of myself they're exhibiting are uncomfortable to me because i learned those things aren't okay exactly so when uh but when it happens with um forgiveness why it's so important is you're going to become more whole right and not we cannot simultaneously love ourselves and hold feelings of resentment for someone else it's right. not so this is a worthwhile thing to meditate on because the only thing I'm going to, if I have resentment, bitterness, attack thoughts or ill will or, or condemnation that I'm feeling towards someone else, those are the feelings I am going through. I'm subjecting myself to that. That right. is not the same as feeling love. Right. So what I give is what I receive. That's so powerful. Like I, I remember something that my spiritual teacher, Karen Berg, used to say was like the punishment for jealousy and envy is the feeling itself. It's not like that, that feeling in itself is, is kind of like the hell. And recently I did like a video about it where I like found a way within myself to transform, you know, um, feelings like that by just speaking and getting into a vibe of blessing and like moving energy within myself with my own words. You know, like you can get yourself into a vibe of, of anything. Our words are so powerful and we're these like infinite beings and you just start expressing something. Like if you, you know, if I take this candle and I'm like, wow, it's actually true. This is one of the best candles I've, I've had in my house and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. And it came to me via a friend and they brought it to me and it was, you know, it was so unexpected and I was kind of going, had a hard day and you know, it came out and now it's bringing like this beautiful smell. And I'm so grateful that I have, a, you know, you can get on a roll and get yourself really into a vibe of anything. Right. So that's one. If anybody wants to check out that video, I'm just throwing it out there that it, it was about transforming those negative feelings inside. It was one one way to do it. But I know that you're you're bringing us you're you're bringing us another way to transform those feelings of of resentment and, and perhaps ill will or ill thoughts. Yeah. 
I, I think because what's going to happen is you, we're going to bump into it in the world. We do so many things for spirituality. We do meditation. We do yoga. We have a million practices. Some of us are also involved in a variety of other kinds of things. There's all kinds of things. But the, what I love about forgiveness is it's integrated. Mm -hmm. It's in the world. So as you're living your life, you're going to bump into places where you feel like condemning the other person or you right. feel like reacting. Okay, right. this is it. This is the practice. There's no time where we're not on our paths. And the world, everything in our world, our body, our thoughts, our emotions, our people, our friends, our enemies, everything around us, our career, everything around the world, the meaning that we choose to give those things is what holds our separate self in place. Right. So we have a chance to integrate ourselves in our waking world all the time. You get on a phone call with a parent, maybe you feel uh, triggered by them in the call. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go, mom. It's been a long day. And, and okay, so what? be aware. Be aware, watch yourself, see what's going on there. So when that happens... But that's, okay, so again, you have to kind of step back from the story because I was just thinking about, you know, something that happened today that I was little bit triggered by and I'm, it's like when it really gets you you're like no but that's not right what's what's going on there you know and so then you, it, you it's very tempting to stay attached to the story and what you're saying is you have to just kind of go within and detach from the story right and go within I'm not saying that you have to put up with crap all the time and and not have you know boundaries for the future but what you're saying that in order to allow yourself a process of integration you have to be able to kind of step back and love yourself enough to go within and say, okay, how, how is Debbie doing? What, what, what is that feeling that just came up, right? Yes. So what, when I feel triggered by something or reactive, all, all those things, um, okay, you said, you said a few things. What I'm going to use that trigger for this is the choice I have. This is the work. So what does it look like? Here's the work. When I feel triggered, I use that as an opportunity to learn about myself, not about what someone else has to do or become or anything like that. Right. Usually, I ha usually when I feel triggered, I feel a need to control someone else or a desire right. to um, react or, or to justify my feeling. Right. So instead of all those things, okay, you can be justified also. I can understand. Someone can legitimately do something that's wrong to us. Right. But what I want to be aware of, if I choose to practice this, is I'm not going to form a narrative. And I'm not going to justify my reactions. So the second thing, okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's the work. And it will only have to do with the inside. Forgiveness has to do with the inside. It doesn't mean I don't set a boundary or I end a conversation or a relationship or that I'm always nice. That's not what we're talking about. Those are right. behaviors with the outside. I'm right. most concerned about what, um, how I create separateness, divisiveness with ultimately myself, but through others. How I create divisiveness if it within me through the good and bad I give others in my life. Wow. Yeah. That's, this is That's very powerful. Like um, I was at the beach the other day and I just saw like the waves coming in and going out and coming in and going out. And I said like, you know, life change can change on a dime. I've experienced it in my life. My, my little brother passed away and my father within three months of each other. And it's like, boom, the whole life can change in literally a split second. And I realized I'm holding on to stuff, but the, the, or things come up, I get triggered. It must be since things can happen and can change in a second, nothing really is by accident. And the reason why I'm being triggered in this way is so that me as a being, this soul is going to have a chance to release whatever this is or to integrate mm -hmm. whatever another part of myself and this is the opportunity that the universe is providing me through this person that's pushing my buttons or, you know, treating me in a way that I don't think is right. That, that's the view. 
That's the view we want to take. That's the work that we have. Is the approach is okay. I, one, I'm going to enter my life with an awareness, right? And then two, I'm going to choose the meaning I give things, right? That's the main the main piece. So it's a, a tricky thing. And then of course, yes, the self wants to be made whole. It wants to become integrated, and part of that is being aware um, of what triggers us. So we can feel triggered, we can feel uh, what we want to become reactive, all those things very natural. And then we have an opportunity in that moment. So what happens? What's the, what's the process? Here's, this is actually from A Course in Miracles. Where in A Course in Miracles? I'm not going to remember. But we also, this, these are things we cover in, in Bloom. <clears throat> in Bloom, excuse me. <clears throat> um, in a little bit more detail, but you've got the gist here. Because this, again, I, I think this is so important because it's gonna provide you with ability to love yourself, to, yeah. to be loved, not even to love yourself, even to love oneself has a little bit of duality in it. The ability to become love. When you're not judging, then you have the ability to see yourself in others and love them. Right. That's what I mean by love. If I'm, if I'm giving hierarchy, other people, some people are enemies, other people are like um, champions, and I have these hierarchies in my life. There's still a lot of divisiveness there, a lot of good and bad, a lot of polarity. When I start to sew that together, I'm basically bringing home parts of myself. Right. So, um, why does it bring us self love? I think I was about to say something else. Oh, so what does it look like? Here are the steps. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. The steps are uh, from A Course in Miracles. Actually, it's from page 401. Now I remember. It's just the beginning of the workbook part two. It says, forgiveness is still. What does forgiveness look like? It's still. And it does nothing. Quietly does nothing. Forgiveness looks, waits, and judges not. Three steps. So... In your day-to-day -day interaction, this can also be what non-reactivity looks like. Means Looks means I'm aware. I'm observing. I'm watching. I go into a situation. I'm observing everything. Forgiveness is still quiet. It does nothing. It looks. It waits. It judges not. Now suppose something happens. I feel triggered. Or someone's attacking me. Um, let's say verbally in some sense. I feel verbally attacked. Uh, usually it's more subtle than that these days, but someone might um, pull their attention away or be dismissive or deny eye contact. All those things are subtle attacks that can be subtly taken personal. Right. Go someone, they don't say thank you. Maybe I take that person. Right. So funny, funny things. So I, I, I'm aware and then I wait. Why do I wait? Because my knee jerk reaction is more likely than not going to be to personalize. It's going to be to feel a certain feeling, anger, right. Uh, right. upset, all those things. So we want to feel through the feeling. Once I've given someone meaning, and we have, listen, as long as you're in the body in this world and unenlightened, I mean, sorry to say it that way, but you know what I mean? As long as- oh, All in which I believe, like, as long as we're breathing, that means we still yeah. have some it's, it's, uh, negativity or if whatever you want to call it negativity or things to work through right i certainly do so um as long as we're here uh we have this lesson to learn so means we give we've given other people meaning value and meaning in our lives about us about who we are so once that's happened we have to face we have to face the repercussion of that means I'm going to feel hurt if they pull away or withdraw, or I'm going to feel angry, or I might even feel happy if they give me a lot of attention. Both of those things, we can even start to like reel in a little bit where we've somewhat given away power and those kind of things. So forgiveness is still quietly does nothing looks, waits and judges not. I look, I'm aware, I'm observed. I'm watching what's happening. I wait because the reaction is going to be, de depending on the meaning I've given that person, I'm going to feel a certain way. I have to feel through those feelings. So I wait for that to happen. It has to happen. Then I simply choose not to form 
narrative, not to personalize and not to condemn. Right. When that happens, I free myself by choosing not to imprison them in some narrative. I become free. This is the magic of forgiveness. I receive it by offering it to you. I become free by not making you something that has the power to make me define who I am. Wow. The That's actually putting you in a position of even more power because more it power. Shows that if you are reacting to somebody, you're giving them your power. And like you said, I really like the example about, you know, somebody walking by and they don't say hi and you take it personally, but like, that's an example of where you can really know. And perhaps we've done it to many people ourselves. You're ever, you're thinking about something, somebody says hi to you and you, you know, you didn't hear, you kept going, whatever. And they might take it personally. Like that's a great example because it shows you how much illusion there can be in these situations and how much it's just there to show us and to help us to release something from ourselves or to see something in a different way. And when I say release something from ourselves, something that came to mind when you were speaking was like, for example, in certain dynamics that I've had where I do feel angry and triggered, I, if I really take the time to step back and I'm honest with myself, I'm like, oh, you know what? This is the same way that I used to feel in high school. It's the same kind of fears I used to have. The feeling state is very similar to that. And you know what, if I go back even further, and this is work that we do in Theta Healing, I say, you know what, that's a, a feeling that I had in relation to my, my mom or dad or in relation to a caregiver that I felt that same way. And just being able to get that awareness can also be really helpful because then I said, ah, this is something in my vibration and maybe in this time by not reacting it, I'm not gonna feed that loop anymore and I'm gonna go be able to jump to a different destiny and hopefully to create something else. And of course, find ways to, and that's like what we do with, with the Theta Healing, for example, is we find ways to release those energetic patterns because they're oftentimes based on beliefs mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we have about ourselves, that we have about others that were formed at certain times. Like I don't belong, you know, where I'm, I'm always left out or, you know, all these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. So I'll just say one last thing, because it, uh, what you just said reminded me of this it, it, in terms of forgiveness, because what might happen is we might very well be intended to go into a situation. And I, I recommend to people, if you know you're going to be talking to someone where there's a lot of history, then you might want to very well prepare yourself for the conversation and say, okay, I'm going to go in very aware. Right. I, there might be a tendency for something to come up, da 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 da, da. And I'm going to just choose to come in very aware. And then you might find yourself reacting two seconds into the conversation. Right. So we have two chances to, to forgive in, in the moment, for example, to become non-reactive in the moment. The first is, no, I remain aware enough. I remain aware. I can practice those three steps. I can wait. Uh, excuse me. I can look, wait, and choose not to condemn or form narrative. But if I... If I catch myself reacting, then the second chance is when I replay this situation in my mind later on. Because guaranteed, when you've become reactive with someone like that, you're going to replay this in your mind later on. Yeah. That's what happens. We've, formed, uh, we've created more time for ourselves in some sense. Right. So when that happens, you have a second chance. Because what's going to happen is your tendency might be to then form a narrative about yourself based on your reaction. Oh, right. I wasn't strong enough. I can't believe it. I lost my, you know, I lost my shit again. And I ended up telling them like all that kind of stuff. And then we might feel kind of bad about everything and form another narrative. So your first chance is in the moment. Right. Non-reactivity and forgiveness kind of combined. Right. The second chance is later on when you replay that situation. I right. would choose not to form a narrative that's self-deprecating or involves some sort of beating up on oneself, judging oneself after. So remember, forgiveness, if it has an opposite, it's judgment. Right. And condemnation. So right. it doesn't, it's you uh, judging someone else outside or you judging your behavior in the moment or in the past. Those right. are both ways of condemning and right. form vision and divisiveness. 
so exactly i mean oftentimes like just for myself based on what you're saying i i'm like you know what debbie like after i react i'm like you know what that probably wasn't the best thing to say i probably didn't do that in exactly the way that i would have wanted but i love myself anyway and you know what i love myself anyway and i just start talking to myself and changing that vibe of like guilt and self-condemnation and starting to get really like feeling bad because that feeling bad is a state that's familiar you know from from childhood or from whatever and so i i say okay now it's a chance for me to really change that and just say it's okay i love you anyway because i'm you know go on a go on a, a little rant for myself yes so it, it's um practices are also beneficial and help i i started off talking about practices that we have meditation we have yoga visualization lots of different healings and modalities and so many practices that people engage in and I think all of these things really get integrated when we relive a familiar situation in a different way. Yeah. This is, this is going to, um, you can start your morning with meditation and then go into your day with an awareness so that you basically can choose. This is the main thing, actually. We have choice to condemn or not, to be judgmental or to be curious, to form a narrative or not. But that choice we, requires awareness. So we start the day with a practice. We bring an awareness into our day. Then as you live, you carry that awareness with you, hopefully. And you, you're able to exercise choice. And the second I can go into a familiar situation and relive that in a different way, I begin to integrate and to create a new version of me. This is also the basis of a lot of the things in blue. Because practices are amazing, but integration, I believe, happens how we live. I'm a big proponent of practice. Please, nobody misunderstand. I don't think you would. But I just know that there's, we can't just practice. And right. I think doing meditation, I can, I can live kind of in this um, old way and think I'm going to continue to grow spiritually. Or I do plant medicine or something that gives me amazing insights, but then I can't integrate that by bringing right. uh, those insights into my life. Right. So we have to live, if we want, my, my, you're getting my two cents here, we, we will receive integration through living in a different way. Right. Through familiar situations, which requires willingness, awareness, choice, those kind of things. And there's no real like roadmap that it's like kind of like maybe just a mindset or a stance that you take towards life, which is that mm -hmm. I'm open and willing to grow and to be shown how I need to do that. Yeah, I, I think we're all looking for something more complicated sometimes or something yeah. perhaps more linear. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, you heard my two cents in the beginning regarding this. I think if you haven't, taking the time to go through and see how much resentment you have toward your caregivers, dead or alive. It doesn't, the, the stories are within us. So that's an opportunity to also go and um, relive everything and to choose to then, for me, it was the most, I think the most healing thing that happened in my life, perhaps, mm -hmm. was the days that I realized, oh, you know, my parents were just doing the best that they could. And anything that I had, any failed expectations and soft traumas that I have surrounding childhood were not about me. They were about their inability to be different than they were because we're not saints, basically. <laughs> and even if they were saints, I might have still personalized things in a way that formed narratives a certain way. So um, I just feel like it's, it's perhaps uh, a place we don't want to go. You also asked me earlier, why is it difficult? Because it means letting go of the you that you've become so comfortable with. And if you let go of you, means I no longer personalize something, means I'm letting a piece of myself go. Who do I become? Right. That is uh, the question. So if you're um there's some resistance to that perhaps for all of us but uh 
usually if that us gets heavy enough, then we decide, no, I'm ready for some growth. Right. Yeah, because we get used to being like a little bit sarcastic, a little bit bitter, a little bit this. And it's like if I were to really let go of those things and who would I who would I be? But it's always leveling up, right? Especially if it's letting go of something like that, like bitterness, like resentment. Mm -hmm. It's allowing more more life force energy, I believe, into if you think of each one of us as a vessel, it's allowing more light force energy to flow in. But we hold on to these little things because they feel familiar and they feel comfortable. And a lot of times it's just what we, how we felt when we were little, when we were like little kids and that we came mm. in and we started picking up on these things and then that becomes our home base. You know, they say that that's like what they say, we're, we are like creatures of habit. And we, you know, they've done all these studies on, on, you know, the comfort or the devil that you know, as opposed to something that you don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I, I also think that it's, it's um, a survival mechanism for basically our individuality, our egos. But the reality is... Um, while we, while we have those narratives in place, we still can't love fully. Loving myself and loving another person, they're not different things. Right. So when I extend love to others, it flows through me and I become the recipient of that love to which I'm giving others. If, I'm, if I haven't forgiven them or I'm condemning them, it's because of a lack of the my ability to love myself completely. That's such a key point because you think like, well, if somebody did something and I forgive them, well, that means that I'm like saying it's okay or that I don't have a boundary or it's gonna happen to me again. But if I really let go of it and I learn with that step of loving myself, that'll, that'll take care of it in itself, right? Right, and it, it becomes an inner state so if it, if it seems too far to love someone that's done something heinous to us, at least don't make it about you. At least don't justify carrying around those things if you can. Right. Go and, and undo some of the narrative that was formed. And then when life gives you that familiar situation again, do your best to, if you choose, to remain aware and choose differently from where there'll be a tendency for the ego to want to cast everything in a familiar color. Yeah. I feel like you'll just walk by. It'll be like if you're walking by like a flower stand and you always went to those same red roses. I mean, I'm, it's actually not the, the right kind of analogy, but it's just what came to mind. And that's like kind of the vibration that you're used to. If you then move yourself into a vibration, let's say oftentimes I do this, I imagine myself, if, if I can't let go of something or if I can't imagine myself in a different space or if I can't, if I'm like, so I, I imagine what a person would feel like and be like, what would a Debbie be like? Or if I can think of another person who I can, who holds that kind of grace, who was able to let go of something, who made it over something that I'm trying to get over and I say like, wow, what would that vibration be like? And I kind of work vibrationally to get there. And it's like, if, if through, and, and it's oftentimes through self, like what would a person who loves themselves do? Well, they would walk by those, those I won't say, let's say prickly roses and they wouldn't even pick them up. You know, they'd go for the yellow ones instead. So it's kind of like that, but in our life situations, like eventually if, I, if we really do the, the correction, I would say, or whatever kind of, the correction of perception and all of the things that you've said, then it's like that situation, you'll walk by it and you won't go, you won't be hooked by it any longer because I'm no longer vibrating with that because the part of me that was vibrating with that situation was a place, was a, was a, a vibe of kind of low self-worth and thinking low of myself and not loving myself. But once I've, now that I know how to love myself, and of course, I'm not saying that I'm totally there, but I'm working on it and I'm working on, on, on the, the, on the deservingness and connecting with the light that's inside of me more than, you know, just always seeing what's wrong. And the more that I'm going into that vibe, 
that situation will no longer hook me because I'm not an energetic match to it. Amazing. Very true. Very, all very words of wisdom and amazing. It's been a privilege and honor. Um, I think, uh, uh, I think I've said everything I would probably say about forgiveness. And the last thing maybe in closing is uh, we go through these um, topics a lot in bloom. It is, uh, people always ask me, what is it? It's focused on how you live how you relate to all those things in your world as a mechanism of becoming more integrated. Because I think this is where, this is where we, we want, um, I might have a controversial view here, I'm not sure. We want self-love, but we're not willing to let go of the places where we still have resentment and where we've still taken personal other things. Right. So I don't think you can have both. Resentment and bitterness are, are, are things that prevent me from being able to love more fully. And ultimately, I think self-love becomes quite perfected when myself is just kind of lost. There's no longer a me anymore. I see myself in you. There's less divisiveness, and then I can love you deeply. That ability to love another person comes from releasing them from everything else. I, I can't do both. It's also good to nurture ourselves and do self-care and all those kind of things. We're worthy of those things. It's an important thing. And we should grow our self-love. We should grow our love. There's no difference. And can you do just a quick... Uh, oh, you were in the self... No, no. Okay. It's, it's good you stopped me. <laughs> um... No, just uh, on the, what you were saying about self-love, that it's the same as love. It's all love. So I was thinking maybe just to, um, to close out this, this, uh, this conversation, if you wouldn't mind, even though I have a feeling that literally we could, I can meet you only as deeply as I've met myself. Actually, I've heard you say that before. Yeah, yeah. Chris, yes. Chris Kingston is saying that. Um, <laughs> I was wondering if if you could do a quick like meditation, maybe something that we can to release or to just invite some something. And I know everybody's in different places, but sure. something to connect with that light and love inside, if, if you would. Okay, let's do a short guided. Um... forgiveness activity. We can call it a meditation, but this will be more um, toward forgiveness. So if you're in a place where you're not driving and you're comfortable, sit down for a moment peacefully. You can close the eyes. Take a nice, long, slow, controlled inhale through the nose as you expand the belly. Long, slow exhale out the mouth. Soften all the muscles in the stomach. Relax the shoulders. Open up across the heart. Open the throat. Relax the jaw. One last time. Long inhale through the nose, please. Slow, controlled exhale out the mouth. Just be very peaceful and aware. Think of someone you love. Feel them in your heart. Extend love to them. Feel connected and loving with them. Thank them. And now allow your mind to become empty for a moment. And think of anyone to whom you have some resentment, feelings of attack, bitterness, 
resentment. Whatever it is that comes to mind, hold them in your mind for a second. And if you choose, repeat the following things out loud. I offer you my love. Those previous things that I had once taken as injustices against me, I choose now to release. They have served their purpose and I no longer need to create divisiveness or consider you as an enemy. I love myself too much to hold any resentment in my heart. And I extend to you love and forgiveness so that I may receive it as well. There is no love but yours and mine and that of the whole universe. And now release that person from your mind and feel the love in your heart. Slowly deepen your breathing. A nice, long, slow inhale through the nose. Exhale it out the mouth. And you can open your eyes. That was so powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me in Cosmic Chats. My Thank you so much for joining again. Wow. Debbie? I love how you said, like, I'm releasing the whole construct, you know, the whole construct of the situation, like the whole construct, I no longer need it to teach me about loving myself because now I'm allowing love in. That was <laughs> such a powerful point. <laughs> Thank you. If anyone has any questions, they can always feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. And uh, Bloom is coming up on April 26. I'd love to see everyone there. It's both in person or also live online and recorded. And it's uh, six meetings across three weeks focused on integration, connection to self, which I believe is what we're all looking for through how we live in the world, our relationships, how we parent, how we view our family, how we have a relationship to our career, all of those things, behaviors, our relationship with ourself, um, a beautiful course, because all those things, our romantic partners, our friendships, family, children, career, self-image, all those things are either going to reinforce an old version of us, or they'll become a mechanism for growth and healing. And Bloom is how we do that. Wow, very well, well said, and just hit everything on the head, so. Thank you so much again, Michael. Have a beautiful day. Thanks to everybody who joined. Love yep. to see you too. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.